All right, traders, we're back for another session of chart reading. Now, you know, if you're a trader, especially an options trader, if you want to be profitable, you have to know or have an idea of which way the stock is going to move. And you have to have an idea of when it's going to get there. If you're buying options, one of the hardest things you can do as an option buyer is get the direction proper of the stock that you're interested in and the timing as well. You know when you buy options, the, the way to win on an options trade when you buy it, if you hold it all the way to expiration is that the stock has to move in the right direction by the right time. That means the expiration date. Such a hard thing to do. This is why we're option sellers here at the, at the Smart Option Seller because when you sell options, specifically put options, you can be completely wrong about the direction of the stock and you can still win on the trade. That's the beauty of option selling. But what we do here today in this video is that we're looking at the charts. We wanna find the opportunities. We, the way that we trade before we take any option trade is that we have to look at the stock charts. We have to see which way the stock is going or not going. So we, we scroll through the charts and we see whether the stock's trending upwards or trending downwards or trending sideways. We look at the overall broad market to give us an idea of which way the, the market as a whole is going to move because that has, that has a big influence on individual stocks as well. So what we do is we always look at the charts. We do our research over the weekends and at night. We put in the work. You got to look at the charts, technical analysts. So that's what I'm going to do here in this video. Is that's, this is what I do all the time. I look at these charts. I make these free videos for the trading community. We all want to help each other. So I'm going to show you what I'm looking for on my charts. I'm going to show you what I see. I'm going to show you the indicators that I use. And we're going to find some stocks to trade. All right. So let's just jump right in here and take a look. For those of you that are new here, uh, my name is Lee Lowell from SmartOptionSeller.com. And it's all about options trading specifically option selling that's what we do but we look at the charts to help us figure out which way stocks going to go so what we do here is let's open up the charts i'm going to show you my chart show you what i'm looking at for those that are new uh up here is the chart price action okay uh, you're going to see lots of lines and things don't don't let it confuse you confuse you it's actually pretty simple I have three moving averages and moving averages are, are, are indicators that people put on their charts to help them understand which way a stock is trending. I have a 50 day, a 20 day and a 200 day, all simple moving averages. This is the price action. This is about a two year look back period. This is the SPY, okay, the SPY, that's the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. Each one of these vertical lines is one day's worth of trading. These are daily bar charts. These are not candlestick charts. So. We have the blue line here. This is the 20 day moving average. Okay, the 50 day moving average is here. And this is the 200 day moving average. Now down here, this is what's called the RSI indicator. It's an oscillator and it oscillates between overbought and oversold levels based on the price action up here. And the 80 level and the 20 level are, are the levels that I set that let me know a stock or index is getting a little overheated on the upside or you know well oversold on the downside okay when a stock or index breaches like the 80 level up here it means the stock's getting a little overbought doesn't mean a crash is coming it just means the overbought uh price on the chart needs to needs to come off a little bit okay but you can see it still keeps going higher on the downside if it breaches the 20 level that means the stock's really sold off and a bounce is coming in the near future okay those are the only indicators that i use now you'll see the, these horizontal lines here and you'll see these sideways lines these are what's called channels i draw these channels by hand to let us know or let me know which way a stock is trending a stock will continue to trend in the same direction until something pushes it and moves it in the other direction and you want to play that direction obviously you can see here the stock was trending down and then it turned and the stock is trending up. So you can use these channels, number one, to help you see which way the stock is moving. And you can use your timing patterns to buy in the bottom, sell to top, buy in the bottom, sell to top. Okay, if, if, you're, if, that's, if, if you are that kind of trader, if you're an intraday trader or you know a swing trader, you can use these channels to help you decide when it's time to get in or out of trades. Now, what we do here at the smart option seller is that we sell put options okay now put options are typically a bullish to neutral directional oriented strategy so what we do is we wait for a stock to you know pull back to you know an area 
and we wait for the bounce. Okay, as you can see here in this downtrend, you know, we would wait for the stock to maybe bounce off the bottom of the downtrending line, and then you know, we try to get out near the top. And if the stock's in an uptrend like this, we, we wait for the pullback to see if it bounces off the bottom edge, and then we get in. We sell put options because it's a bullish trade, so we want to try to get in. You know, a higher probability timing pattern is getting in near the lows when it's bouncing off the bottom edge of a channel. Okay, we do that. That's how we, we you know, we base our entries and exits for our trades. So what we want to do is we want to look and see where the, the overall market's going, then we'll, we'll dial down into some individual stocks. So if you follow along with the markets, all time highs, all time highs in the S&P 500 was made right here in the middle of July. We had this pullback and then we had the massive move down early August. Those first few days of August was a massive, massive pullback. Scared a lot of people. You can see these three days, one, two, three days. It was a huge drop and it, and it, and it, and it jacked up the, the VIX. I'm gonna show you the VIX as well, which is a really important indicator that we use to help us measure fear in the market. And it also helps us measure option prices, okay? so. Middle of July, we had all-time highs, had this big pullback here. It bounced all the way back up, almost retouching those all-time highs. Had a little bit of a pullback again early, once September rolled around. And then just this past week, the last couple of days, it bounced really good again. So now what we have up here, and I drew this line weeks ago because we were looking at a double top. A double top is when you have a major high, you get a pullback, and then it rallies up again almost to that same major high. So at the time, it was hitting a double top. Well, now we're at what's called a triple top. One, two, three. Triple top can either be a, you know, a bearish scenario where the, the, the market just cannot bust through this resistance and it's going to get knocked back down, or we play both sides here, or it, it, it just crashes, right, you know, it, it busts right through, and then it's on its way to make more no, new all-time highs, okay? So next week in the market's gonna be pretty critical. We wanna see how, how, it, how it plays once it comes up to the, the resistance line right here, which is, you know, probably 563, 564 on the S, you know, the SPY. And in the S&P 500, it's 10 times that amount. That'd be about 56, um, 20 area or something like that. We can look at the actual SPX index here. So this is the actual SPX and you can see it's 5626. So it's about 10 times greater than, than the SPY itself. So you can also see, and what I'll do is I'll draw the resistance up here and you can see, um, you know, a triple top, you know, in, 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 in technical analysis um, measures, it's a, could be a bearish scenario where it just couldn't get up through the resistance takes three times and then it gets knocked back down so we may see that so let's pull the spy back up here again my first inkling is to, th to think it's going to try to get up through this resistance near 564 it's going to get knocked back down but i'm a long-term bull the market goes up in the long run all the time so it's only a matter of time before it gets through this resistance and starts to make more new all-time highs that's what the market does let's go back and look at the the long-term history let's go back to the monthly chart of the s p 500 going back to the early 1990s the market just goes up up, up over time of course you're going to have pullbacks along the way but you cannot stop the market from going higher now if we dial back to the daily yes on an on an intraday basis i'm talking within the same day within the same week even within the same month the market is very random the market is very random if you're a short-term trader like that you have to be super precise with your timing okay so what i'm expecting to happen is i'm expecting to see a little bit of resistance here early in the in the week see if the market can get through here it may get it may get knocked back down how far not how far down don't know we're not going to have any kind of crash this isn't you know a like this is this is not foretelling that we're going to have an economic recession or anything like that that's just saying that we we've come to a triple top there's going to be a pause there there's going to be some back and forth there the bears may win out for for the short time but in the long run this is going to fall and the market's going to keep going up higher over time i i play for the long run i'm in for the long haul i buy the spy and hold for 
hold forever because I know it's just going to keep going up. But if you're a shorter term trader, you have to you have to deal with what the market is showing you. So for right now, going into next week, we may see some more resistance right at this line here. They get a little pullback, but eventually the bulls will will move it higher. OK, so that's the S&P 500. Let's look at the Nasdaq. We look at the triple Q's, the QQQ's, because uh, that is the exchange traded fund for the Nasdaq. Here's the symbol up here. Uh, not as strong as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ has all those high, those tech stocks, those high price tech stocks. And so it had a little bit of work to do. We had, I had, you can see the resistance line I drew here from a while ago. We had the, it made the all time highs here in July, had that big pullback, found support right at the 200 day moving average, bounced good, just like everything else, had the pullback again and bounced up. So the NASDAQ is, is, have bounced like the S and P 500, but has not gone all the way back up to all time new highs. So it has a little more work to do, and the Nasdaq sometimes leads all the markets because it's got those big name stocks that that make up a huge part of their indexes. So when those stocks move, it's going to take the whole market with them. All right. So we really need the Nasdaq to start leading the market and get through this resistance line here and start to go up. But we may just like the S and P 500 see a little resistance here maybe get a little bit of a pullback and then the market will start to go higher august and september seasonally is always weak for the stock market once we get through september now i know there have been some big down moves in october but the last three months of the year are typically very bullish okay so if we can get through september and part of october without much happening we're gonna see the move to all-time new highs i think in my opinion, by the end of the year. So you would just have to just wait it out for a little bit. Let's look at the Dow Jones. We use the diamonds, DIA, here's a symbol, DIA. This is the exchange traded fund for the, the Dow Jones Industrial. <clears throat> um, getting ready to blast those all time new highs. The Dow's actually been just performing pretty strongly. You can see the up move and let's put this, let's draw another pattern. So here's another pattern we like to call the flat top. We got the up slope and then we have the flat top here. This is a, you know, a, what's called a bullish ascending triangle. Okay, if I can get this line to line up for me. You got the move up. You can see it's sloping upwards. It's got the flat top trying to get through. More likely than not, it's going to push through and go higher. Uh, we may see a little bit of sideways action kind of getting towards the apex here. But like I said, it's only a matter of time before it blasts higher. So the Dow seems to be pretty strong. The S&P 500 is pretty strong. The Nasdaq's got a little more catching up to do. But in the long run, we're going to see more new all-time highs. Now, for those of you that are playing individual stocks, let's look at some individual stocks. We typically look at these bigger uh, Nasdaq stocks because they're the most popular. People like to trade them. So let's look at Apple. Okay. We want to try to find some trades. So you know, before we go on here, for those of you that that don't know anything about selling put options, that is our bread and butter. That is what we do. You can go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Here it is up here, smartoptionseller.com. Get our free ebook. OK, this is the free ebook. Click on the free ebook. This is the put selling basics. This is all about what put selling is all about, why we love it so much and why it's our bread and butter, because it's a great trade. OK, you scroll down here, put your name in this box right here. We'll send you an email back with a link to get the free ebook. All right. For those of you that might want to go a little deeper, we also have our video series. OK, this is a uh, five part video series. It's a deep dive into um, what put selling is all about. And, and this is from a webinar that, that I that I had. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the video series you can scroll down here you can see what you'll get from it also possibly coming up i may be holding another uh live webinar um so you'll get some information on that as well and then if you want to know what else we do here's our two newsletters here that we run we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching that you can sign up for if you want to get a little leg up we have our calculator and all that good stuff all right so that's what we do here at the smartoptionseller.com let's go back to the charts here so this is apple okay we all know apple let's look at the long-term chart of apple you know what else can you say it's a great company it, billions of iphones uh it sells each year i mean it's and they keep coming out with newer versions every year you know the, there's no way that apple stock is not going to go up over the long run okay 
where it is on a shorter term basis. If you're trying to day trade this thing, if you're trying to trade, you know, within the same week, it, it's a really hard gig. That is a really hard thing to do. You're going to sit there in front of your screens every day, all day, trying to pinpoint the bottom on a one minute chart or a five minute chart. You will burn yourself out. It's very frustrating. You'll hit losing trades and you're going to walk away from the market. That's not what we want. We want to look long term. OK, that's why we sell put options and because we know we can be wrong on the direction and still have winning trades. But regardless, Apple, um, you know, a great company, it's going to go up in the long run. Where is it at right now? It's a little choppy. It's going up, going down, going up. It looks like the overall market itself. OK, but if you have the patience and take a longer term horizon on Apple, you know, it's going to go up in the long run. I can't really see anything here that would make me tell you one way or the other where Apple's going to be next week because nobody knows. But we can draw some patterns here. OK, this is more of a, you know, congestion pattern where the range gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually it's going to pop up either up or down out of the triangle. OK, so we got a few more days before Apple kind of makes that decision. I'm leaning towards the upside because I think the upside is where all stocks are eventually going to go. But it depends on your time frame, depends on what kind of trade you're trying to make. All right. So let's look at Amazon. Amazon, same thing. Um, we, you know, a while ago we had the resistance here. It was able to get through it. And then like everything else, it just crapped out. It fell pretty far below the 200 day moving average, but they, it doesn't, most stocks or indexes won't stay too far down below the 200 day moving average if it's a quality stock and if it's been in an uptrend. This was just, you know, this was probably a really good buying opportunity on Amazon. And now it's run all the way back up. And it's above the price action is now trading above all three moving averages, which is strong. OK, you if you're a bull, if you're a bull, you want this price action to be above all the moving averages. And eventually you want all the moving averages to be sloping upwards. OK, you got the 200 day sloping upwards. The 20 day has now curled upwards. The 50 day is the only one that's still a little down sloping. So once that 50 day starts to curl up, then you know Apple's going to be in a uh, Amazon's going to be in a stronger uptrend. Um, let's look at Nvidia, another stock that everybody has been playing over the last year or longer. Um, look at the uptrend on Nvidia. Same thing, had made the all-time new highs, got knocked back down, went up, got knocked back down again. Same thing. We have this congestion pattern, just like everything else. It, it's gonna it's gonna break out in one direction or another. Now, these are chart patterns that over time you will learn what to look for. You'll learn how to spot the trends. You can draw the, 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 the channels. I've looked at, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of charts over the, my 30 plus years in the business. These patterns repeat themselves over and over again. It's only a matter of time before Nvidia and the other stocks that are in the same pattern. It's going to blast one way or the other. What do you do? You want to wait until it gets out. OK, you don't want to try to front run it. You don't want to try to guess, because if you guess to the bullish side, then all of a sudden everything craps out. It's going to go down. So it's better to wait until the stock tells you where it wants to go and then place your trade. Most people want to try to get in beforehand. They want to try to be the hero. They want to, you know, pat themselves on the back and say, yes, I picked I picked the right direction. More often than not, you're, you're going to lose because you never know where the stock's going to go. Wait for it to make that confirmed movement. Yes, you won't buy it at the at the at the lower price than you would have wanted to. But at least you're going to get on a confirmed move that's either higher or lower. OK, uh, and that's uh, NVIDIA. What else do we want to look at? We can look at Google. Now, Google's been weak. You can see the. It does not look like the other stocks. This is in a in a downtrend at the moment. OK, now here's where we can draw the channel. You can see uh, Google's just in this downtrending channel has fallen below the 200 day moving average here, but it, it, it came back up. Now it's right on the edge. So what what we would want to see is we would want to wait for Google, number one, to start trading above the downtrending line and start trading back above the 200 day and here's the 20 day moving average right here so we want to see google start moving up this way otherwise you know it's hitting resistance right at the the top edge of the channel it may get knocked down again that's how down trends work it rallies back up to the trend line and then it may get knocked back down again 
or if Google could get off its butt, it will start to trade up here and then we can say, okay, it's starting to get some mojo back. And if it could do that for a little while, say for a week, then we can say, all right, maybe we have a bullish case here for Google. Maybe take a little dip, dip a toe in the water, maybe buy a few shares to see if it really wants to keep going higher. So when a stock's in a downtrend, you really have to wait to see if it's ready to make that move higher. Uh, let's see what other stocks are in the um, list here. Oracle, Oracle was, uh, I had the resistance line here in Oracle. It was either it had its earnings or, yeah, I believe it was the earnings because look at the power move higher. It was the earnings. Uh, this is an all-time high, I think, for Oracle. Let's take another look here. Yeah, look at that. Oracle, great company. I don't like to play, I don't like to play uh, positions before an earnings announcement because you never know which way it's going to move. This could have easily just dropped down. So, uh, but, but now Oracle has, has created a new a new trend for itself it's higher uh, it may settle back down sideways for a little bit before it starts to go on it's way higher but uh we have no no stake in oracle at the moment amd still waiting for amd to get off its get off its butt there let's take a look at netflix i like netflix we just got out of a profitable trade on netflix in one of our newsletters the stock is in an uptrend okay i i must have drawn this line a while ago it's in an uptrend okay the line is uptrending netflix keeps moving higher uh it's just you can here is the 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 bullish ascending triangle that i drew earlier started going up had the pullback just like everything else but it was starting to create that new ascending triangle again pulled back again just like everything else but i'd be you know if i had to make a bet right now um i'm bullish i would be bullish on netflix we got out of a bullish trade i'm just waiting to get in a potential new bullish trade on netflix i like the way that netflix looks what else can i look at here cisco okay so here's one where cisco was in a downtrend okay we had to wait for it to to make that move towards an uptrend so what i liked here is that cisco finally got out of the downtrend moved above the downtrending line moved above all the moving averages so right now cisco could be in play for potential um bullish trade in the longer term it finally got out of its downtrend. You want to wait for that. And we can even even draw maybe here might be the start of the new uptrend. So this could be the place where bullish trades could have been placed. Now, I'm, I have to take a, a closer look at this one uh, for potential new trades in the newsletter. All right. Started a new uptrend, has pulled back to the lower edge, pulled back to the 50 day moving average right here, right here. So uh, I think this could be an area where uh, bullish plays can be can be placed. I'm going to have to take a closer look at that for the newsletter. So that's Cisco, um, Walmart, all time new highs, Disney. Disney is another stock where, again, here's look at this. You want to know which way the stock is trending. Now, if you want to be a bear, you can play bearish. You can buy put options or, you know, sell call spreads. Don't sell naked call options. Super, super risky. Don't do that. But it's in the it's in the channel. So you wait for it to possibly get up towards the upper edge of the channel and then you put on your bearish trade. Disney's in a downtrend. There is no way I'd be taking any kind of bullish trades on Disney right now because it's not showing me it wants to go higher for any sustained period of time. I would not be entering any kind of bullish trades on Disney whatsoever right now because it's in a downtrend. Don't put your neck out there. Don't try to be a hero and think that you've bought the bottom because it can just get knocked right back down. Wait for it to show you that it wants to go up. Sure, you're not going to buy at the bottom, but you want to be in that confirmed uptrend that will ha give you a higher probability of being correct and making yourself some money. OK, so that's Disney. Let's see what else we have. Tesla. Tesla is so hard to hard for me to read the charts. I, I say it every week. I drew this congestion pattern. It looks like it's starting to, to bounce out higher. Who knows? I, I don't have a stake in Tesla. It's hard for me to to do it. Um, Bristol Myers, uh, you can see here we had the we drew the resistance line. Still trying to get through that resistance line. Pfizer is a stock that that. I have long term. I've I've purchased deep in the money call options on Pfizer. It just can't get out of its own way. It's just the sideways action is just killing me. But it it has finally finally gotten out of this long term downtrend. 
started going sideways. It's above all the moving averages here, but it just can't get that you know that last push to let everybody start piling on so it's still kind of trading sideways you know i purchased longer term deep in the money call options with which are bullish trades so i'm hopeful that that pfizer is going to you know turn the corner here and start going up um you know that's that's pfizer for me um costco another good looking stock here just the uptrend just the uptrend and we can draw a line here too. Costco has the, you can see the uptrend, but it, it got through. I think, I think that, you know, there's, it's gonna go, it's gonna keep going. I mean, a stock's in an uptrend. What is gonna, why would it all of a sudden start selling off? I mean, because it made a new high. That's a reason why the stock has to fall. That is not a reason why. A stock could keep making more new all-time highs. What's to stop it from doing that? If the company's profitable, it's going to keep moving up, okay? So you're more apt to buy, even though it's at all-time highs and you may be buying the highest price ever of the stock, it could keep going higher versus trying to think it's hit a top and it's going to crap out. Why would Costco crap out? That's what a lot of people come to me and say, it's, it's, it's too high, it's too expensive, it can't go up any higher. Of course it can. So... It's a strongly trending stock. It's got a little resistance here. It's going to go through. Okay, so these are the things that you need to look for before trying to place your trades. Um, let's see, McDonald's strong. Uh, here is another stock that came out of the downtrend, uh, finally showed some upside, and look how strong it's been going. It's almost all the way back to where it was before the downtrend started. So you can also say now McDonald's is in this channel. It's in an uptrending channel. So if you want to get... A bullish on McDonald's now well then you would wait for it to pull back a little bit to either the 20 day moving average or to the bottom edge of the up channel these are the gonna these are going to give you the higher probability setups okay watch your charts use the charts um, same thing this is Warren Buffett I like Warren Buffett I, I've started putting more money into into Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway fund because it, it it's it's the same thing as a exchange traded fund an ETF. It's a fund. It has multiple stocks. Are you going to you going to bet against Warren Buffett? You should not bet against Warren Buffett. It's like investing in the overall market just keeps going up over time. Hit an all time highs here. And now it's having a nice little pullback pullback maybe to the 50 day moving average. But you can't hold Warren Buffett back too long. Here's, here was the congestion. The congestion got tight, 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 tight. And then finally it showed you where it wanted to go. Even on the little pullback here in early August, look how it powered higher. Don't bet against Warren Buffett, all right? Um, Meta must have drawn this channel a while ago. It's still in the channel still in the channel hasn't hasn't broken out yet but it will only be a matter of time if you were a bullish trader okay if you're buying call options you'd be losing money all this time because the stock's not moving far enough for you to make any money okay unless you were pinpoint accurate and bought some calls here and you were lucky enough to sell them here but you may have held and then it crapped out again so if you're an option buyer your timing has to be pretty good and you have to take profits along the way. You don't have to hold the option all the way to expiration. You can trade out of them and take your profits and go. Um, IBM, strong stock, looks like it's making all time new highs. What else do we have? Oh, here's another stock I wanted to show you. Clar this is Colgate, okay? Colgate Palmolive makes all those products that we buy and have and use in our home. Look at this beautiful uptrend, always bouncing off either the 20 day or the 50 day moving average. Would you be a buyer right here? It's bounced off the 20 day moving average so many times before. What do you think it can keep it up and bounce again? If I was a buyer of Colgate, I wanted to be long on Colgate and may have to, I may have to take a closer look at this one. Dip a toe in. Dip a toe in here, maybe buy a few shares. If it pulls back to the 50-day, you buy a few more shares there. It's in an uptrend. It will stay in that uptrend until something comes along and knocks it in the other direction. What would that be? It would be a really, really, really horrible earnings announcement when their next earnings report comes out. So if you're following along, 
Colgate, just a beautiful uptrend bouncing off the moving averages. Use the charts. These are the kinds of things that will help you get into better trades. Okay, so that's Colgate. Coca-Cola, um, you know, flirting with all-time new highs as well. Moving along the 20-day average, 20-day moving average, kind of looks like the Colgate chart. Um, Adobe crapped out, had earnings. They dropped uh, anything else. That's it, SMCI. You know, that was a darling for a while, and then it's come all the way back down. Went from 400 to 1,200 and all the way back to 400. So there you go. It's a tough stock to trade. All right, so that's it. Gone about half an hour here uh, looking at the charts. This is what we do. You got to put in the work. You got to do the research. Got to get ready for next week. Use the charts. Let them help you make better option trades. That's what we do. Once again, go to our website. Get the free ebook. Uh, look at the video series if you want to go for a deeper dive. In the description below, please look down below in the description of the video. I have books and websites that can be helpful to you. We also, people have been asking me about if I use a scanner to help scan for my trades. I have three scanners down in the description below. Got links for three software scanners that may be helpful to you. Take a look at, click on the links. Um, you know, it could help you as well. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell your friends, hit the subscribe button, all those good things. I want to help, you know, these videos go reach a lot of people. All right. So that's all for me today. I hope this helps everyone and I will see you in the next one. This is Lee Lowell signing off.